this really should make you angry with the way progressives are operating in Washington right now. There is this thing you're going to start hearing about called ESG. ESG. It stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. And right now, one of the provisions in the Democrats' reconciliation plan Beyond the $600, now $850 a month uh, spying on your checking account is a provision that would require your managers of your 401k to steer you towards investments in groups with good environmental scorecards, good social justice scorecards, and good gender equity scorecards for governance. you got enough women on the board. This is in the Democrats' reconciliation plan. Your 401k manager will no longer be allowed to just invest in the best stock for you. Your 401k manager will be presumed to not be investing in the best stock unless the company that it's investing in is good for the environment, good for social justice, or good for governance, meaning women got enough uh, members of the alphabet gang on the board. This is coming. This is in the legislation. It has been taken out and put back in repeatedly. It's, it's, It's in now. And now the Wall Street Journal is sounding the alarm that it's not just that. BlackRock and NASDAQ now want the Securities and Exchange Commission to impose their social and political agenda on all companies, including private firms. The SEC is expected soon to propose rules requiring companies to publicly disclose climate, board diversity, and human capital metrics. Large asset managers and government pension funds have found mixed success pressuring public companies to adopt these disclosures, which is why they're now endorsing government coercion. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink has threatened to vote against director slates of companies that don't comply with the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board's environmental, social, and governance disclosures. NASDAQ is requiring companies that list on its exchange to include two diverse board members or explain why not. The SEC noted, and I'm reading now from the Wall Street Journal op-ed, or opinion, it's actually the editorial piece, The SEC noted when blessing NASDAQ's de facto diversity quota in August that studies on the effects of board diversity are generally inconclusive. However, NASDAQ's proposal would lead to more efficient collection and use of the information by investors. In other words, it'll make it easier for Mr. Fink of BlackRock to bludgeon noncompliant companies. Democratic commissioners Allison Heron-Lee and Carolyn Crenshaw issued a separate statement that, quote, there is more work to be done in improving both diversity and transparency in public companies and in our capital markets more broadly. In short, the NASDAQ rules are merely step one. They want to broaden ESG mandates beyond public companies. Private companies aren't covered by the SEC's disclosure regime. They don't sell securities to the public. Progressives, however, are urging the SEC to extend its ESG disclosure mandates to those companies anyway. California Attorney General Rob Bonta in an SEC public comment endorsed standardized and sufficiently specific disclosures for public and private companies. You see what they're doing here is they're trying to collect the data and use the government to do it by which they can steer the mob. Now there's something else here you need to know as well. A lot of these companies that do this sort of stuff, they're not the best companies. I don't have a problem if a company decides it wants to take steps to minimize its carbon footprint. I I don't have a problem with them doing that. I really don't. I may not want to invest in that company, but, you know, I invest in Apple. I I own stock in Apple. I, I buy all Apple's products. I buy stock in Apple. And Apple is one of those companies that is doing what it can 
for sustainability reasons, for environmental reasons, to make everything with recycled materials and have carbon zero uh, in their production. They want to use renewable energy, solar, wind, water. They want to do. They want to do all this stuff. And good for them. They're they're a, a private business. They're allowed to publicly traded private business. Their shareholders want it. Good good for them. I I don't see any reason to do that, but they do, and and that's fine. And Apple makes great products, and they can do that. Other companies, however, don't necessarily make good products or provide good services. But they do this to virtue signal so that people will invest in the companies who want to feel good about themselves. And now the government, the SEC, wants to force every company to do this. And not only that, Congress wants to force your 401k to invest in those companies. And it's really to prop up those companies. Because the companies themselves may not be doing a good job. But the government can force money managers to buy their stock and prop them up anyway. They want to use the government to not just control you, but to control everything. They don't want the free market to work. Now, the reason they don't want the free market to work is they have no faith in the free market. It's not only that they don't have any faith in the free market, it's they think the free market is bad because the free market goes to cost efficiencies. And it's not efficient, let alone it's not cheap to try to minimize your carbon footprint. A company like Apple, a trillion-dollar company, can. A smaller company may not be able to. So they're trying to force this on everyone. And in trying to force it on everyone, that's where they're exercising control. See, people are looking over at, at the COVID stuff and they're saying, oh, they're trying to control us through COVID. That's not really it. I know a lot of people think that, but that's not actually it. They're not trying to control us with COVID. As I've mentioned repeatedly, their issue is they promised us COVID zero and they can't get there. So now they don't know how to get off the get out of the pandemic. They're stuck. That's not where they're controlling us. It certainly looks like they're controlling us there, but it has everything to do with they promised us COVID zero and now they can't get there and they can't admit it to themselves or to you. This right here, though, this is how they're trying to control us. This is the control issue. These people want to control your life. These people want to control how you live. These people want to control your investments to reward their friends. See, these people haven't been getting their money back on all this stuff. And so they're going to go after it. And, you know, the the larger issue here is the breakdown in public and private distinctions. For example, this has now happened with uh, opponents of critical race theory, conservatives, right of center people who oppose it. They've shown up at school board members' houses and they've protested outside their houses. That's wrong. But the only reason they're doing it, this was not a conservative thing until the left started doing it. The left started doing it over immigration, over over taxes, over health care, over all these things, started showing up at people's houses and harassing people. And so, of course, people on the right, the post-Christian right, have adopted this and said, well, hey, they're doing it. I'm going to do it, too. It looks like a winning tactic if they're doing it, so I'm going to behave just like them. It's not a winning tactic. But what it really is is it's further breaking down the divide between the public and the private. And in breaking down the divide between the public and the private, you risk greater authoritarianism on both sides. You know, I I, I think it's kind of funny. Uh, so many people f- want to focus on the authoritarianism of the side they're not on. I think both sides have a tendency. There is right-wing authoritarian in the world. Uh, Pinochet was, a, was an example of that. There's a lot of left-wing authoritarianism of the world, what tends to come from both is a uh, irreligion or an atheism that drives it. The post-Christian right and the and the post-Christian left have a lot in common in that regard. And one of the things that they have in common is this breakdown of the distinction between the public and the private, that there are things I can do in my public life that are different from things in my private life. And we as a society should be able to honor and understand the distinction between things you do in public and things you do in private. 
and your statements in private to your friends should not be used to condemn you in the public space. And your private life, your home, and your family should not be used to punish you for your public statements or votes or performance or behavior. And yet all of this is, and increasingly it's the mob doing it. And the mob is largely wielded by the left, and it is largely designed to shift us publicly. I get a lot of people, uh, you would be amazed at the number of people who on a regular sustained basis come after me for talking about the transgender agenda. The reason I do it is because I know there is a concerted effort to get all of us to shut up about it. There are some people who say, well, you're just obsessed. It, it, it has, listen, they're way more obsessed with me than I am with them but I feel obligated to talk about this issue because the bullies on the left want to shut everyone up and they can't yet shut me up. And as they shut more and more people up, including now, it looks like Dave Chappelle, those of us who are concerned with this growing authoritarianism on the left should be obligated to speak up about it. Yeah, Twitter, you know, shut me down, uh, suspended my account for 24 hours after calling the man from New Zealand, Laurel Hubbard, a man. Ali Bestucky was the same way. Um, my buddy Brian Matson, who probably very few of you, if any, have heard of. He's a theologian up in Montana. Great dude. Really, really, really just uh, love the guy. And his account has been turned off for noting that the new admiral in the health service is not actually America's first woman admiral, as some have reported it in the media. And as Twitter becomes more censor, cens- censorious on this, and others do as well. I just think I've got an obligation to talk and to speak the truth. The left is trying to use the government and corporations to censor you, and they don't understand they're playing with fire because there will be a backlash. There will be a backlash. When they're now trying to steer your 401k accounts to make investments they deem worthy instead of what the free market deems worthy, they're headed to a very bad place. They're taking all of us there with them, and that's going to foster levels of resentment This breakdown between the public sphere and the private sphere, whether it's with businesses and trying to force private businesses that aren't publicly traded to behave as if they're publicly traded, whether it's forcing your private decisions into the public to shame you, ridicule you, bully you, you got to stand up to this stuff. And honestly, for corporations out there that are upset about this as well, but can't really do anything about it for CEOs that are concerned, the easiest way to win the fight is to not play. It's, it's to not engage on the issue, to go on as if everything is normal, to ignore them. More people should, and yet they refuse to because the media comes after them, everybody comes after them. You've got to be able to stand up and say, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. You've got to not play the game, and you'll win. 